Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In this episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, it's all about getting ready for 2021. I want to show you all the changes I made here, talk about how to put the beds to rest. The great, well actually the best way to have a great start of the season is to put your beds to rest. I'll talk a little bit about that as we walk around. But you don't need to spend a lot of money. I'll talk about that too. So these are polycarbonate cold frames. I'm going to show you some ways that you can extend your season or start your season early. One of them is with cold frames. This is polycarbonate. I highly recommend spending the extra money for that versus plexiglass, versus plastics. Get the polycarbonate. This has a UV rating to it. It's going to last a long time. They are kind of expensive. I don't have a specific company I recommend. These are by Juul. They are um, somewhat expensive, but this is what I wanted. What's cool about this is the temperature inside there right now is 66 degrees. Outdoor temperature is 42 degrees. I'll be starting my cool weather crops in there. So I'm not going to have to use any space inside under my grow lights on my grow light station to grow the cool weather crops. I'm going to be able to do it out here. I might germinate them inside because they'll like the warm temperature to germinate, but I'm going to get them out here pretty quickly. I'm keeping a diary basically of the temperatures too. So next year I know what the temperature ranges are so that I can grow in here through December into January and you know, I'll get information on when to start or when I can put plants out here in the spring. That is a thermometer wrapped in a paper towel in a Ziploc bag. If you're going to put a outdoor thermometer in these, wrap them in the paper towel. It will hold moisture if moisture gets in there and keep them in a Ziploc bag. You just don't want water getting into them. But this is how I know what the temperatures are in here. And again, I'm keeping track of that. Now this is pretty cool. This is the same setup and you can see that it's on a wood base. What I actually did was I dug out um, 12 to maybe 14 inches and I'll be overwintering my pepper plants in there next year. Again, I'm collecting data on the temperature. That's a citronella plant. If that survives, this was actually outside in freezes um, for the last three weeks before I dropped it in there. You can see that there's some growth in there. If this plant survives over our January and February in there, this is going to be a perfect place to overwinter my pepper plants. Now, polycarbonate, it's going to last a long time. It's got a UV rating on it. I do recommend it. A little expensive, but worth it. So, this is going to save me time and money in the long run because, again, I'll get my cool weather plants in there. I won't have to put them under grow lights. You know, and you do save money. So when you do have to spend on something like that, that was somewhere between two and three hundred dollars. Just think about the plants that you're going to grow on your own, and you're not going to have to go buy them at stores. Now this is corrugated polycarbonate, and it's not that expensive. These are six foot beds, and I don't know. I can't remember what I did. Maybe two or three feet wide. These pop in nicely right here. And I will be able to grow cool weather crops under here, specifically radishes, probably starting in February. I just set this up. I'm going to put some eye hooks right here, one here, one on the other side, bungee cord across this way. When the wind comes, it doesn't pull this off. But I've also been monitoring the temperatures under here. And even when it drops down to 28 degrees, even without caps right here, this temperature stays closer to 32 or a little bit above. So if I cap this off, just insert some foam board or something right there, I'll be able to grow greens, radishes in here probably the entire year here in Maryland. So this is the first time too that I've been able to completely set my garden up for the winter. And I'm very thankful that I got to retire from my mental health work in uh, I think it was the last day of June it's given me time to do something that I've not been able to do for 20 years everything I'm really kind of excited about to see if everything that I've talked about that I know that if I put it into practice now in the entire garden how well will the garden do next year well, what do I mean by that so you don't have to spend a lot of money to set up your beds this is just wood ash a layer of wood ash under there, and then grass and leaves thrown on top. Put a tarp on, keep the moisture in. That helps with the uh, worms enjoying it a little bit more, uh, microbiology breaking it down. Throw something on there to weight it down. Those are just some A-frames that I grow cucumbers up. 
This way the leaves don't blow away. Same thing in here. Leaves, grass, tarp. Doesn't have to be anything, you know, beautiful. It just has to be functional. Where maybe you don't have the tarps, that's fine. Leaves and grass. That will break down, especially if you have a good four or five months, and it will feed your soil. It's also going to be a great mulch. It's also going to be great to mix into it. You don't have to set up elaborate composting like I do over here and then bring that out in the spring and put it in your bed. You can put it directly on your bed. Save yourself some time. Got a lot of cool weather crops still in there. Arugulas taking freezes at 28 degrees. Beets. Uh, those are Brussels sprouts. Looks like the mustard greens froze a little bit. They're going to come back. I'll show you that in a second. That's pretty cool. That's cauliflower in there. One thing I didn't know is that's dill. Dill can freeze. You know, and I'm always learning something um, just about every month, if not every week, about gardening. I didn't know. I would have sworn, and I would have told you, you can only grow dill in the summer. It likes the heat. Well, that's not true. Look how well it's doing. And we've had plenty of nights here where the temperatures have gotten into 28 degrees. And you can see the mustard greens are drooping a little. That's because the leaves froze all the way through. Broccoli's over here. Been getting nice heads of broccoli. That's ice right on there. These crops, and again, want to stress is you don't have to just grow in the spring. You can grow pretty far into the frosting nights if you select the right plants. You can also give them some protection. This is something I'll be doing a full video on and it's two pieces of the polycarbonate panels. They overlap right here and this is Sun Tough. I don't particularly recommend them but it was a fair price. Also has UV protection. So what's really cool is I had to build this frame, you know, and then insert, look, this is all frozen, ice. Insert this piece in here, keeps it a nice tunnel shape, and I'll be able to grow this cauliflower well into January. And what I wanted to do is come up with something that was really easy for me to pick up and move. And I can just lift this up, move it out of the way drop it back down and somewhere in there is a nice cauliflower for me. Really inexpensive to build, really functional in the sense that I can just pick this up and move it. This was put on well after these were large so the, the leaves got a little bit beat up. But imagine, you know, and it's pretty inexpensive. It's a cost of building this and maybe these panels were like seven to eleven dollars each but it will last for years. I'll slide off the wood frames, they'll stack. These will be perfectly flat. I can store it, bring it out again in the spring if I need it. In fact, I'll probably just keep this December through uh, April, keep it out because it's not gonna degrade. It has the UV protection on there. This is a space that I haven't covered up with leaves. You can take alfalfa pellets if you want to save yourself a lot of money. $15 for 50 pounds if you want to get the organic variety. I think it's about $21 for 50 pounds. And just sprinkle the pellets of alfalfa on here. And that's like putting down any organic fertilizer. I'll be doing a video on that. But it's a way to supply your beds, your containers with nutrients now. It could be grass, leaves, alfalfa pellets, wood ash. But try and get them kind of put to sleep because come spring, four or five months, worst case is the earth still got your fertilizer and nutrients in there. And maybe this isn't broken down enough, but you could just move it away, plant, you have a great mulch or, you know, rake it away and throw it into your compost bin. You can't lose doing this and it's going to really help you have a great start to the 2021 season. Uh, let's go out here. And I want to show you what my soil looks like because a lot of people worry that they have to have perfect soil, perfect everything. These beds here are actually double shredded hardwood. So they're almost a soil now because they've broken down so much. But you can grow in all kinds of different mediums. You just kind of have to 
learn what they are. We'll talk about that some other day. Beds over here too are double shredded hardwood. This was my once dig garden and I actually called it a no dig garden and people got mad because you actually dug. Well, sometimes if your soil is not the best, you may want to dig it, turn it. It takes a little bit of work. Um, but then after that, just let it go. You don't have to turn it or dig it anymore. And basically, this was a circle. I dug it down almost 24 inches, took the grass, put it in the bottom, put in some sticks and other things, put the soil back on top, planted right on it. This space now will take care of itself going forward. You can see that I just dropped in some leaves. Worms will have a great time in there. Break down what's on the bottom. This all isn't going to decompose, but I'll just move it, put it into the compost pile. But I'll know that this space has been set up really well for next year. I grew two tomato plants, two peppers in there, got nice harvest out of it. This is a true no-dig garden. And the whole idea is, if you have a ton of compost, and say you were going to grow in this whole space, rather than dig and turn it, that's when it becomes a ton of work. You just lay down four to six inches of compost, set it up, plant directly into it. The plant roots know what to do. They get into the soil. There's cardboard under this that will kill off any of the weeds coming through. And then you just add compost year after year and the space takes care of itself. Charles Dowding, I can't say that he pioneered this, but he sure did um, support it and make it you know, come to light for all of us. And it works, it's really, really effective. Those are turnip greens that are a little bit frozen. Um, that is, It'll come to me. Broccoli Rob. I got lettuce and spinach in there. Check out Charles Dowding. He really will give you great instruction on how to set up a no-dig garden. And it makes sense. It works. I planted right into this right after I put the compost down. Now, it does cost money if you're going to bring compost in. It's a little bit expensive. If you're able to make it great, not everybody can do that. That's why I show you all kinds of different ways to have gardens because I can't just say, and I'll be saying this a lot, uh, just use compost. If that worked, we'd all have great gardens. We'd all have compost. I've cleared out these compost bins, put them into piles here. This will just sit for the next four or five months and that will break down nicely. That's what I did last year. This is the remains of last year's compost. And look how beautiful that is. This is what's going to go into those sunken containers, about two inches on top. And you can, you know, do, do that too for your containers. You can reuse your container soil. You can reuse your container soil year after year. You can dump it out, add amendments to it, add compost to it. You could put a couple inches on top if it's fairly new stuff. Do that for, you know, two or three years before you dump it and refresh it. You don't have to keep refilling your containers with new container mix. Make it yourself, add amendments, use compost. Now this space will get cleaned up this week. It's all gonna be cleared out. I'll be doing a video on how to use the alfalfa pellets right on these beds. Again, cool weather crops, kale still growing, beets love it. This is when I pick beet greens. Bok choy, some radishes. One of the changes I made was I took the cattle panel that was right in the space there. It was way too crowded. And I dropped it here. And there was cattle panel right in here. Decided to make a tunnel. These are, I wanna say grapes, they're not grapes, muscadines maybe? So they're like grapes. They're going to grow across here. I've been training them across and you'll be able to walk through here and harvest fruit from it. I think that'll look pretty cool. Cleaned out this whole space. It's going to be maybe a work area for the garden. This was all overgrown, so I have some more space there. Added in the containers here. I'm going to be growing my ginger, and I do sell these root pouches. These are 100 gallons, and they're pretty inexpensive. I think we do have them at a fair price can't recall off the top of my head, say 24 to $30. We have 100 and 150 gallon root pouches. But this can grow a whole garden. I'll be actually be doing a series on it. Where I showed you that dill, I'll be doing a whole series on my other channel 
of how you can grow a full garden in that space. So here's my soil. This is what it looks like normally. It's a red clay full of micronutrients and good stuff in there, but it's kind of heavy. And even though when you walk across my beds, they look like it's really good stuff, it's only because the top four inches or so are mixes of compost and leaves and grasses. You don't have to go down one foot, two foot, make the soil perfect. You can just put layers in. This is a layer of the red clay, double shredded hardwood, red clay, double shredded hardwood. You can make different kinds of growing mediums inexpensively if you just kind of, you know, maybe spend December, January reading about it and learn about it. This is my mushroom garden. I've showed you that before. But you don't have to start out with perfect everything. Just get your plants, just get your garden set up, and then get your plants into the ground. Learn as you go along. Growing garlic in here, I had a bunch of extra cloves and I decided to just tuck them in around this tree. More mushrooms in here. I just really want to encourage you to keep going, you know, expand, learn from 2020, and have a lot of fun. You know, I was talking with uh, Kevin from Epic Gardening, and I highly recommend his channel. I'll put a link in. And he said, you know, you only get one season a year. And he was really just talking about, we don't have a lot of time, you know. So 20 seasons from now, I only get to have this garden 20 more times. It doesn't seem like a lot to me. And that kind of just stuck with me. But the, the key is the key is to make the best of that one year you have for that year. Start season doors, get started early, plant backup plants, have a strategy, um, talk with other gardeners, talk with you know community members that have gardens. Just have a lot of fun with it. You know, there's only so much time we have and there's only so many gardens we're gonna get to have. But this garden is still giving to me in the middle of December. And I really haven't used the corrugated polycarbonate sheets, the tunnels I made. I haven't used the cold frames. This is one I built last year. It's just a single piece of polycarbonate. And I'm growing spinach and some weeds in there. Uh, kale, lettuces, it works really well. And just remember, all these plants that I showed you have frozen completely through. We've had plenty of nights. 26, 27, 28 degree days. These are the fabric pots I'm gonna be growing an entire garden in. I'll be doing a series on that. We're gonna grow cucumbers, squash, zucchini, tomatoes, peppers, all kinds of different things in this little footprint. This is perfect. You could put this on your decks, on concrete. You can grow in there that way. You know, so as we're kind of concluding, this is really how I'm gonna begin 2021. Try and get your beds put to rest. Put in, you know, different kinds of of any kind of organic matter and like I was saying worst case is it only breaks down partially and you just remove it throw it into your compost pile and I guess I was saying 20 years of gardening seasons left I don't think I'm going to die in 20 years my point was is, is life is short you know we have this pandemic going on you never know what's going to happen but just enjoy each season of your garden enjoy it with friends family fellow gardeners and just make the best of it. You're doing a wonderful job getting started, learning, growing, and let's just add on to it season after season. Hope that makes sense. I guess that's enough rambling for today. And I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. And I will see you guys on January 2nd. We'll get into seed starting and really begin 2021 with starting seeds indoors, and I will show you how to start them without grow lights too. It's pretty simple once you know, I've talked about it a little bit, but you don't need an elaborate grow light system, system to start your own seed starts. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.